and had called them not Tartar but Tatar. After having been horrified by Mongol attacks, they began to call these Asian nomads uh, Tartarus in Latin, which means hell. Uh, phonetically is similar to Tata. Matthew Perry is a Dominican uh, monk from England, claimed in his chronicle that devil-like Tartarus uh, freed uh, from uh, Tartarus, uh, uh, it means hell, invaded Europe and carried out massacre. Tartarus uh, that had been intentionally uh, created to exaggerate uh, the cruelty of the Mongols was quickly accepted as a term referring uh, to the Mongols. Uh, Carpini, whom Pope Innocent IV dispatched to the Mongol world, uh, he says uh, in his uh, travel account that European Christians uh, refer to Mongols as Tartars. Another traveler, Audrey, uh, tells a more detailed and accurate story about the name and Tartar in his travel account. According to him, the Tartar and Mongol tribes are different nations, and the Tartar was one of the many people uh, conquered by the Mongols. Moreover, the Mongols did not want themselves to be called Tartar and wanted to be called their original name Moal. Despite the wishes of these Mongols, Audrey called them uh, Tartar like other Europeans in his travel account. Paper envoys uh, traveled the Mongol world and collected accurate information about the ethnic origin of the Mongols. But they called various ethnic groups living in Asia by one or two terms. Uh, they continued to refer to the Mongols as uh, Tartars. I passed the uh, other subject, uh, physical uh, characteristics. Iris Origo uh, described the Tartar slaves uh, uh, forced to go to uh, Florence as follows. Mostly is small and squat, yellow skins black hair, high cheekbones, dark slanting eyes, many of them deeply marked by smallpox and the scars or tattooed patterns on their faces. The physical appearance of Tartar slaves depicted by Oreo closely conforms to the physical characteristics of the Tartars mentioned by paper missionaries uh, dispatched to the Mongol world. Karapini, a papal envoy to the Mongol world, described the physical characteristic of Tartars in his travel account as follows. In appearance, uh, the Tartars are quite different from all other men, for they are broader than other people between the eyes and across the cheekbones. Their cheeks uh, also are rather prominent above their jaws. They have a flat and small nose, like me. <laughs> their eyes are little and their eyelids raised up to the, to the eyebrows. For the most part, but with a few exceptions, they uh, slender about the waist. Almost all are uh, of medium size. Carapini's description is similar uh, to the portrait of the Mongol Khans. Uh, 
you can find uh, some examples of the Mongol Khans uh, on the internet. <laughs> you can uh, easily compare uh, what I said. Uh, the analysis of the Florentine uh, registers of slaves uh, revealed that reported slaves uh, flow into Florence from about uh, 10 areas. Uh, Tartar, Greek, Turk, Russian, uh, Bosnian, Albanian, uh, Saracen, uh, it means uh, Islam, Muslim. Circassian, uh, Alan. Uh, the Alans uh, were a kind of European people deported from the Black Sea uh, to uh, Beijing by the Mongols. Uh, and they became uh, bodyguard of the great Khans. The, the analysis of the region of origin of slaves reveals that the areas around the Black Sea, uh, the center of slave trade, uh, were divided in detail. On the other hand, uh, there were no regional details of slaves uh, uh, from areas beyond the Black Sea, especially from Asia. The fact that the Asian regions beyond the Black Sea was not uh, subdivided in detail. It suggests that Tartar slaves, uh, presumably from Asia, may not be from the same place or region. Therefore, Tartar slaves uh, cannot be regarded as the one same tribe of the Mongols uh, because the Mongols were only minority of a vast Mongol empire from the eastern part of Europe to the far east. The register of slaves mentions various physical characteristics such as height, skin color, nose shape, eye color and shape, ear condition, face shape, pox marks from disease scars, tattoos. Analysis of the skin color of Tartar slaves revealed unexpected result. Uh, I was uh, so unhappy to find this result. <laughs> anyway, most of the Tartar slaves had olive uh, colored skin. Another Unexpected result is that a majority of Greek, uh, Russian, and Turk slaves also had the same olive colored skin as most of Tartar slaves. These results suggested suggest that Tartar slaves uh, in the regist cannot be regarded as the same and tribe, for example, the Mongols. Uh, finally, in terms of skin color alone, it would be difficult to say that Tartars, Greeks, Turks, and Russians are different races or ethnos. Is it possible to distinguish, distinguish the racial or ethnic origins of slaves uh, by their eye color and shape? Asian people observed by a rubric on European traveler have small eyes, Asian people small eyes. However, the size of the eye is not mentioned in the register of slaves in Florence. The Florentine uh, document mentions only the colors of the eyes and they are divided into three categories, black, white, and brown. Considering that the common eye color of the Mongols is uh, black, 
only a few of Tartar slaves can be regarded as Mongols. It should not be overlooked that many Tartar slaves had not black eyes but white eyes. The expression, uh, Latin expression, oculis uh, so foronatis in the document is observed often. Uh, there is no Latin or Italian match to this word. Some interpret it as a tangled eyes unique to the Mongols. Iris Origo, on the other hand, interprets the word uh, sunken. In sum, we cannot confirm the racial or ethnic identity uh, of slaves by their eye color. I speak uh, about the nose. The nose is divided into several subdivisions. It describes in detail the form of the nose, such as a very large nose, nasal, uh, magno, a wide nose, uh, naso, amplo, a ra large nose, nose, naso, uh, grosso, a thick nose, naso, uh, grossetto, a pointed nose, naso, affilato, a sh uh, sharp nose, naso, appuntato, a hooked nose, uh, naso, aquilino, a long nose, naso, longo, a drooped nose, nasal lincagnato, a wide nose, nasal retto, a small nose, nasal barbo, so snubbed nose, uh, etc. What type of nose is a uh, typical nose uh, of Tartar? Carpini describes in his travel account Tartars have a small, uh, flat nose, nasum. Habent pranum et modicum in Latin. But more than half of the slaves had large or slightly larger uh, noses. If the, the pointed nose, the hooked nose, and the sharp nose are counted as European nose, about 30% uh, of slaves may be regarded as Mongol. In general, we can't uh, distinguish the tribes or races uh, by the height of peoples. Lubrock mentions in, in his travel account, the Chinese uh, were small. Isti katai sunt barbi omines in Latin. Uh, and Manchurian uh, and Korean, <laughs> we was small and groomy, uh, like the Spanish. Probably it is like the Spanish people. <laughs> In the register of uh, slaves, the height is divided into three categories, uh, small, uh, medium, and uh, tall. Most of Tartar slaves uh, were of medium size, while Small-sized Tartar slaves account for approximately 30%. I speak next about the Mongol names. The names of slaves also is one of the factors that can distinguish their origins in that Every tribes and nations have their unique na naming systems and therefore their unique names. For example, medieval European people name their uh, children after Christian uh, saints, uh, such as Christine, Mary, Pete, etc. In the register of uh, slaves are often mentioned their original name and newly acquired uh, Christian name. Uh, you have a list of the uh, names uh, in the total program. Uh, 
I conclude uh, my short uh, presentation. Uh, travel account uh, chronicles and the paper uh, correspondence uh, reveal that the term of tartar was used as a common word referring to Mongol. But uh, tartars mentioned in the register of uh, slaves uh, of Florence did not belong to the same ethnic uh, group with, a, with similar physical characteristics. Then uh, may we conclude that the, the term of Tartar does not uh, define only the Mongols, but encompasses a broader category of race. A few uh, clues uh, can be uh, found in the slave trade accounts made in Tana, located uh, north of the Black Sea in the middle, late Middle Ages. Benedetto Bianco from uh, Venice, who served as a notary in Tana between 1359 and 1364, composed many slave trade contracts in total of uh, 430 notarized documents, the sale of Tartar slaves was the largest with uh, 57 cases, followed by uh, Circassian uh, slaves for the second and Mongol slaves for 11% of total uh, transaction. Unlike Florentine citizens, Venetian and Genoese merchants active in the Black Sea were clearly distinguishing between Mongol and Tartar slaves. Given that most of Tartar slaves reported to the government of Florence came through the Black Sea, only a few of Tartar slaves would have been Mongols in the narrow sense. The rest would have been people from various parts of the central Eurasian continent beyond the Black Sea. It is undeniable, however, that Mongol girls had to endure painful and shameful lives by uh, by forcibly being dragged into the Italian city of Florence in the late half of the Middle Ages. It is difficult to completely exclude the possibility that among the Tartar slaves in Florence, there are Koreans that had been forced to go to Mongol Empire or their uh, uh, descendants. Uh, thank you very much.